Hello students, in today's class, I'm going to start a new chapter, that is chapter 12, Alternating Current. Uh, the in this chapter, we are going to discuss about how current is generated and what will be the equation of current and voltage so generated when magnetic flux changes. Okay, till now we are studying about magnetic flux. Now we will discuss about the current, that is alternating current, which changes or it is like a sinusoidal wave the first topic which we are going to discuss is induced voltage developed between the ends of a coil revolving about an axis in a magnetic field now this topic is what you have studied in class 10 while studying AC generator when you generate current from a generator then the same type of diagram is what you have started you have taken a coil okay in this diagram you can see you have taken a coil and when you rotate this coil in the magnetic field region what happens induced current will be generated so over here it is the emf which will be generated when the this coil rotates okay that induced emf is the induced voltage which gets developed between the end of a coil okay between these two end of a coil induced voltage will be developed which gives rise to the in alternating current so that is what we are going to discuss now when a closed coil is rotated rapidly in a strong magnetic field the number of magnetic flux line passing through the coil changes continuously okay this is magnetic suppose uh, imagine there is a region of magnetic field over here there is magnetic field region passing from one point to another point and you take a coil this kind of a coil and you rotate rapidly okay right now if magnetic field line is passing from this side to this side then this coil is not being touch in touch with the magnetic flux so uh, zero magnetic field lines are passing from this coil right now but when you rotate this when you rotate this rapidly right now the flux line will change now there will be many number of flux line passing again when you rotate this it will be zero again maximum again zero so the number of flux lines keep keeps on changing when you rotate a coil and when the flux number of flux line magnetic flux line changes it gives rise to induced voltage which in turn gives rise to induced current now the direction of this current is given by the fleming's right hand rule in fact the mechanical energy expanded in rotating the coil appears as electrical energy in the coil now in this figure is shown a coil of a wire placed in an external magnetic field b it can be rotated clockwise about a horizontal axis, axis perpendicular to the field. Suppose the initially the plane of the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic flux line. In this position, the number of flux line passing through the coil is maximum. So it is this position. This is magnetic flux line. It is perpendicular so maximum number of flux line will pass from this particular coil when it is parallel it is minimum number of flux line which passes to through this coil so the change in magnetic flux line gives rise to current or induced voltage so first of all let me write the equation of magnetic flux flux is b cos theta multiplied by area b is magnetic strength of magnetic field theta is the angle of rotation about what angle it is rotating a is the area of this particular coil or this equation can be written as ba cos theta now this theta depends upon how speed or how fast we are rotating this coil so the theta it actually depends upon the velocity of the coil which is changing with time so theta is equals to velocity multiplied by time this is angular velocity okay not your linear velocity but angular velocity multiplied by time so let us replace this over here now we get 
flux is equal to P A cos omega T. So when we rotate this coil, what changes is theta keeps on changing. With that, what changes is the number of flux. Sometimes it is maximum, sometimes it is minimum. So rate of change of flux over time will be there. Okay, this is rate of change of flux with time. So what you have to do now is you have to differentiate this particular equation with respect to time. So differentiate B A cos omega T with respect to time. So when we differentiate this, I'll continue this over here. When we differentiate this, B is a constant that is magnetic field. A is the area of the coil which will be constant. Now we need to differentiate cos omega t and also omega t separately okay we need to differentiate cos omega t and omega t separately so b a remains fixed i'm continuing this over here b a is fixed differentiation of cos omega t is minus sine omega t differentiation of omega t will be omega so rearranging this, it will be minus B A omega sine omega T. This is what we get. That is the rate of magnetic change of magnetic flux over time. Now by Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, the EMF induced in each turn of the coil is EMF induced in each turn is minus n d phi by dt. This is from the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction or what is known as Newman's law. So over here in this case our alt, our induced voltage is represented by V. Okay, EMF is represented by V that is induced voltage. Now in place of d phi by dt we are writing this given value minus B A omega sine omega t so now rearranging this minus into minus plus it will be n b a omega sine omega t this is our induced voltage in the coil when the uh, coil is rotated with this velocity that is angular velocity omega in the given time t now this shows that the magnetic magnitude of the emf induced in the coil rotating in the magnetic field changes continuously with time the maximum value of sine omega t is one and so the <clears throat> maximum value of v is n a b omega so maximum value of this induced voltage will be when sine omega t when the value of sine becomes one okay because you know that the value of sine it varies from minus 1 to plus 1 so maximum is plus 1 so the maximum value of this will be n b a omega when sine omega t becomes 1 so this will be re represented by v naught v naught is the maximum induced voltage developed when the end of a rot coil rotates it's revolving about an axis in magnetic field so this is v naught now let us substitute this value of b n b a omega in this equation so your v this is v is equals to v naught sine omega t okay this is the induced voltage in a coil v naught sine omega t now let us see what happens to the voltage when we rotate it in this so these are the different position of the coil in uniform magnetic field. Now initially the plane of the coil is perpendicular to the field B. We start with this position. Initially it is this. So initially in this position your theta is 0. So initially in this position angle is 0. So if angle is 0 over here your V becomes okay in the first case V is equals to V naught sine omega t sine 0 is 0 
okay sine 0 the value of sine when this part theta becomes 0 it is 0 so v becomes 0 okay v is 0 <clears throat> so in this position the position of the voltage is 0 degree let us keep this point as 0 and uh, let us keep somewhere at as maximum now the second condition when v it is rotated 90 degree okay it is rotated by an angle 90 degree initially it was this we considered this position as 0 degree now it is rotated 90 degree it, at this position so when this angle becomes sine 90 degree sine 90 degree is 1 sine 90 is 1 so 1 into v naught will be v naught this v naught is maximum this is maximum 0 is minimum so let us keep this point over here as maximum this this is an axis that is omega t theta is changing continuously with time so we'll plot a graph over here in the third condition again it rotates 90 degree so 90 plus 90 it is 180 so now v is equals to v naught sine 180 degree sine sine 180 means zero again it will be zero which is minimum so in this position it is it again comes back to in this 180 angle it again comes back to zero and this 90 it goes to maximum now in this one after 180 again when we rotate 90 degree we get v naught sine 270 degree which is minus 1 so it just becomes minus v naught okay minus v naught means it is maximum but in the other side so this over here is maximum over here in the other side okay this is 270 degree now ultimately we come back to the initial position after rotating 360 degree after rotating 360 degree we come back to the initial position so sine 360 degree is again zero which is minimum so again we come back to zero position after rotating 360 degree so now let us join this from 0 to 90 90 to 180 180 to 270 270 to 360 so we get a sinusoidal wave this kind of a wave so this is the wave for the induced voltage when we rotate in a uniform magnetic field now <clears throat> thus in the first half rotation of the coil the voltage induced in the coil rises from zero to maximum so in the first half when we rotate the coil from zero to 180 degree it rises from zero to maximum again back to zero and while in the next half rotation the induced voltage rises from zero to maximum in the opposite direction then again becomes again becomes zero this process is repeated again and again okay when we rot rotate this coil this process this wave is repeated again and again the current which flows through the circuit due to this alternating voltage also changes continuously from zero to maximum zero min again maximum in the other side then again zero so this type of alternating current okay in one and other half rotation is known as alternating current which changes according to the voltage this kind of current will be known as alternating current so the equation is similar to that of the voltage now for alternating current the equation is i is equals to i naught sine omega t why the equation is same because the current also changes in the similar way as the voltage changes because voltage is directly proportional to current now this voltage induced voltage is giving rise to induced current so voltage is the main reason from where the current is being generated so the equation will be the same when voltage becomes zero current also becomes zero when voltage become maximum current will also become maximum so this will be the equation of current now i'll show you the graph of current and voltage in the same same graph okay this is the graph of current and voltage this axis over here y axis is voltage and current axis 
x axis is the time axis okay this axis is the time axis red line denotes voltage this is the voltage blue denotes current wherever the current is zero voltage is also zero equation of voltage is v is equals to v naught sine omega t current is i naught sine omega t so wherever the current is zero voltage is also zero voltage is maximum current is also maximum at the same point but remember that the maximum value of voltage is always greater than the maximum value of current because there will be some sort of <clears throat> current lapse when we do this kind of thing we'll study that later on but maximum peak value of current this is the peak value where the voltage has gone to its maximum value is the peak value okay this is known as peak value which is denoted by v naught now the current over here this is the maximum of current this is the peak value of current denoted by i naught so peak value of current v naught is equals to n b a omega we know that and peak value of volt current is also n b a omega is still the same peak value and voltage of and this current is same <clears throat> so this is an alternating graph of alternating current and alternating voltage so now there are few terms which we need to understand uh, first of all let us see in the time axis this is when time is zero okay this is half rotation that means not a complete time period but half a time period okay okay before starting time period let us first discuss about few terms some definitions regarding alternating current and voltage first one is maximum value or peak value i told you this is the maximum value of the voltage this is the maximum value of current which is known as peak value which is also known as the amplitude the maximum displacement from this origin original line is known as the amplitude so <clears throat> v naught and i naught represents okay this line over here is v naught this is i naught v naught and i naught represents peak value or amplitude now periodic time if one complete rotation of a coil rotating in a magnetic field the current produced in the circuit rises from zero to maximum value in one direction falls from maximum to zero again rises from zero to maximum in opposite direction then falls to zero this is called the complete <clears throat> this is called the cycle of the current so in one cycle it rises from zero to maximum goes back to zero zero to maximum in the other side again goes back to zero so here it completes one cycle so again it starts from zero to maximum maximum to zero again zero to minimum uh, maximum in the negative side then then again you're back to zero so in this whole graph current and voltage has completed two cycles okay it has completed two cycles so the time taken by alternating current to complete one cycle okay to complete one cycle from this point to this point is known as <clears throat> periodic time of the current or voltage so if this is t this point is t it has completed one cycle over your t so this will be t by 2 okay then if this is t then it has completed started another cycle from here and completed it over here so this will be 2t so this is 2t and this point over here is this point over here is half of 2t that is 3t by 2 <clears throat> now uh, the value of time period how will you find the time period time period is equals to 2 pi by omega this is the formula for time period now another one is frequency the number of cycle completed by an alternating current in one second is called the frequency of the current so if this from here to here is one cycle so in one second 
a current and voltage will complete many cycles, many such cycles. So that cycle is known as frequency. So frequency, the formula of frequency is F is equals to 1 by time period is equals to 1 by 2 pi by omega 2 pi divided by omega which is, is equals to omega by 2 pi whatever is the time period frequency is just the opposite now the unit of frequency is cycle per second or hertz anything you can write the frequency of domestic alternating current the current which comes in our household the frequency of that is 50 hertz it means that in one second the current which we receive in our house produce this type of a cycle 50 times okay it produces 50 times so 50 times it is at highest value and again 50 times it is at the lowest value it also means that alternating current in electric bulb wires or bulb flows 50 times in one direction and 50 times in opposite direction in one second since in one cycle the current becomes zero twice okay in one cycle whenever it <clears throat> points over here it becomes zero twice hence the bulb lights up 100 times off and 100 times on in one second itself that is in 50 50 cycle it is 100 times switched on 100 times switched off but due to persistence of vision it appears light it continuously because in one second you cannot imagine 100 times a light of bulb getting switched on and off so what we see is we see light continuous but it is not continuous it is getting switched on and off 100 times in one second okay so these are the basic terms of in this chapter that is alternating current so with this uh, we'll stop our class over here itself we'll continue in the next class thank you